And let's listen to some voices of climate change skeptics. Climate is changing naturally. It has to do with sunspots. It has to do with the wobble of the earth. These are voices from the fossil fuel industry and the industry of advocates who speak for them. We need more data. The science isn't there to make that determination. There is no need for us to rush to this kind of judgment. CO2 is a benefit to plant life. It's increasing uh, the bounty and the productivity of the planet, our ability to feed populations in this world. What you're seeing here... That's from a new documentary film that looks into the world of climate change deniers, their campaign to sway public opinion, and the business interests behind them. It's called Merchants of Doubt. It's inspired by the book of the same name by Naomi Oreskes and Eric Conway. Joining me here in the studio is the film's director, Robert Kenner, who also directed the documentary Food, Inc. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Melissa. Great to be here. And Robert, you're drawing a direct link in your movie between deniers of climate change and people who, in years past, also denied the harm of tobacco. What is the connection there? Well, really, uh, people who, who had defended tobacco when they knew for 50 years their product caused cancer and was addictive, they were able to create doubt and say, we need more studies, we need more time. When they knew what their product did, they knew before anyone else because big corporations have to have good science. And so they knew their product was deadly, but they couldn't say it doesn't cause cancer because that's an out-and-out -out lie. But they could say we need more study. And, you know, it can be used now for any industry. And the big money maker at this point in the big payday is climate and energy. And that's why it's out there. And you quote a line from a, a consultants, a PR firm's uh, report to, to the tobacco industry. Doubt is our product yeah. was their line. And then one man who was so skillful in uh, slowing down legislation on the slow-burning cigarette, uh, saying it wasn't cigarettes that caused house fires, it was uh, couches, uh, and he went on to make it where we had to have laws to put these chemicals in couches and babies. Flame retardants. Flame retardants. And uh, he went on to say, if you can do tobacco, you can do anything. Is it the same cast of characters, though, who were lobbying or, or supporting the tobacco industry and are also denying climate change? It's many of the same people, and it's almost identical playbook. And I think that's what we try to lay out is how you can just see this pattern used over and over and over again. And as they say, they don't have to win. They just have to create doubt and delay. There's a moment in the film where you interview a uh, climate scientist James Hansen, who's been one of the, the strongest voices sounding the alarm about the risks of climate change, the real dangers. And he admits to you that scientists make lousy communicators. They're just not good at, at selling the science of what they're trying to explain. But you contrast that with a man named Mark Morano. He's a climate change skeptic. He's fre frequently on TV. Um, he runs the blog Climate Depot. And he was really clear with you about his tactics. Let's take a listen to what he said. You go up against a scientist, most of them are going to be in their own little sort of policy wonk world or area of expertise, very arcane, very hard to understand, hard to explain, and very boring. And on TV, he, he Mark Morano, is not boring. Bottom line, new study in the journal Nature, peer-reviewed, no change in U.S. drought in the last 60 years. Bottom line, a new study out... You can't, you can't be afraid of the absolute hand-to-hand -hand combat metaphorically. So, so what is that that hand-to-hand -hand combat that he's talking about there? Well, Mark, uh, his theory is that you go after the scientists and you attack them personally, go after the messenger. So all of a sudden, our scientists become the targets. And I think that's very unfortunate. These are not people who have an agenda. These are people who are ultimately working 80 hours a week. James Hansen had very little interest in going on camera with me because he'd much rather be doing his science. And... I think it's not the job of the scientists to represent themselves on television because they're busy doing the work and they can't compete with the Mark Moranos of the world who are quite charming, quite funny, quite fast and have studied PR techniques in a way that the scientists have not. I'm talking with Robert Kenner. His new film is Merchants of Doubt. Uh, in the introduction, I mentioned uh, Naomi Oreskes, who wrote the book that inspired your film. She's a Harvard professor of the history of science, and she frames this as a, as a much broader battle. None of this is about the science. All of this is a political debate about the role of government. So in a number of places, we actually found these people saying 
they see environmentalists as creeping communists. They see them as reds under the bed. They call them watermelons, green on the outside, red on the inside. And they worry that environmental regulation will be a slippery slope to socialism. And you have a number of, of clips that illustrate that, of, of people saying, uh, at the end of the Cold War, we threw these people out the window red. They've walked back in the front door green. How, how common is that message? We found numerous clips of people going on television, Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh holding up a watermelon and calling them watermelons. So uh, at some point, environmentalists became the new enemy. If it's not about the science, though, as Naomi Oreskes claims, but it's about politics, it's about your worldview, what what tribe you belong to, um, it doesn't seem that there's much that a, a film like yours could do to change people's minds. Well, I think, you know, first of all, I think tribes move. You know, they're not static entities. Uh, you see what's happened with the gay marriage situation. Republicans and Democrats were opposed to it in 08, and all of a sudden it becomes acceptable very quickly. Um, I think as people start to realize that this is not an issue uh, that's an ideological issue, it's really about the planet and the science is there, um, that they'll want to change. You know, the real debate will be, what are we going to do about it? Was there ever a moment when you um, questioned the science or the, or the tactics of the environmental movement? Anything you learned from the climate change deniers that, that gave you pause, made you think, well, you know, some of the environmental movement have, have gone too far in trying to make their yeah. case? I think sometimes people can overreact. Uh, and it alienates another group of people. Uh, if you overstate your case sometimes, you're going to turn people off, and representing things as totally dire when they aren't could be misleading. Um, we are capable of coming up with solutions if we put our mind to it, but at the same time, we tend to not want to think about this as a problem, and that's not about ideology. That's about all of us. How, how easy or how, how difficult was it to get folks on the the denier side of climate change to, to talk to you for this film. They must have known you had a point of view here that was not going to agree with theirs. Yeah, I, I think I was clear in representing myself. I had made Food, Inc., and people had seen that. And uh, But I was open to hearing how they did what they did and why they did what they did. And But not everybody wanted to appear in the film. There was the man who had been responsible for it putting chemicals, uh, flame retardants into the couches and baby clothing, who hadn't spoken to reporters, and he returned my call to my surprise. And when I said that we're doing more than just a film about tobacco and flame retardants, it's also about climate, he said to me, you know, you could take James Hansen, the world's leading climate scientist, and I could take a garbage man, and I could get America to believe that garbage man knows more about science. And and he's been very successful at what he does. And there's a group of these people who have been very successful. Uh, and hopefully we can get to the real debate, not this sort of fake debate. Robert Kenner, director of the film Merchants of Doubt, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you.